the man dug this tunnel all by himself, um, single-handedly, one person, with a couple of tools and um, a lamp. I've gone inside this tunnel. Um, after a while, while uh, the tunnel starts getting narrow, and then there is a point in which you have to crawl and go. So imagine a man uh, who used to dig the tunnel in the night time, not even in daytime, in the night time, all alone, had to dig the um, tunnel and carry the mud out by himself, dig more, carry the mud out again. Like he had repeated the whole process over and over and over again, thousands of times to dig this tunnel. This is not the only tunnel he's built. This is the sixth tunnel that he has dug. In the first few tunnels, he um, didn't get water. On the sixth tunnel, he found plenty of water. The water comes through here, and it kind of acts like as a filter. And then the overflowed water goes into this bigger tank with about uh, 25,000 liter capacity. And as the water moves continuously through till the end of the summer, and as this place is in an elevated place in the topmost part of the farm, um, the water is distributed through channels and a sprinkler system throughout the farm without using electricity. He uses integrated um, farming system where he uses multi-layer um, crops. On the top layer he uses arecanut and coconut where uh, sunlight is captured up there. Um, and second, he has um, black pepper going on the arecanut and coconut as well. And then he has nutmeg, and then he has banana, and then he has cacao. And we also have in between fruit trees, I see a star apple over here. Uh, jackfruits also um, it grows quite tall. He um, took for the step farming and he dug these different terraces or steps in his farm. So basically it was just a hill before. And he all dug it himself. He has over uh, 10 honeybee boxes in here. This pond is my favorite. They have the lotus growing in this uh, pond. Hi friends, uh, my name is Partha Varanashi and along with Roshan Shetty from um, uh, Discover Agriculture and Varanashi Development and Research Foundation. We are here at um, Ame Mahalinga Naik's farm who is a Padma Shri awardee. And we are going to see how he does natural farming and also natural and organic farming over here. Plants have existed on planet Earth for over 450 million years. Their existence um, created the opportunity for the animal kingdoms to develop. Plants are the main engines in the carbon cycle which creates life on Earth as we know it today. Sunlight, carbon dioxide, water, oxygen, and soil biology are, are the other key players in, the, um, in this carbon cycle. Hence we can say that if we can increase the speed of carbon cycle in a farm, in a natural farm, we can increase the efficiency of the farm and also the high performance of the farm. In a natural farm, if we can increase the efficiency and the speed of the carbon cycle, we can say that the farm is performing really well and we can have a good yield from it. So just earlier we spoke about how um, a carbon cycle, the efficiency of the carbon cycle will allow the farm to perform really um, high. Now let's consider the components of this uh, involved in this carbon cycle. So first we spoke about um, sunlight and then the carbon dioxide, oxygen, water and then we have the soil biology. Now. Uh, in this farm, Amai Mahalinganaika is very famous. The reason why he got his uh, Padma Shri award is how he did his um, water harvest. So he dug tunnels uh, through a barren land on a hill, on a slope. And as he dug a tunnel uh, through the farm, I mean, so through the hill, he started uh, collecting water. So he had to dig about um, six tunnels before he could get water. But finally, eventually, he got, a, got water in a in an elevated space of his farm where he taps the water and collects it in a tank and then he uses it for irrigation downhill so he doesn't need any electricity but he uses the gravitational force um, from the top side of the tank through to the entirety of his farm so he takes care of his water through and through to the from rainy season till the end of the summer he has uh, free flowing water 
where he doesn't have to use electricity to pump it to uh, his plants. Um, the second thing is uh, the sunlight and he has he uses integrated um, farming system where he uses multi-layer um, crops on the top layer he uses arecanut and coconut where uh, sunlight is captured up there um, and second he has um, black pepper going on the arecanut and coconut as well and then he has nutmeg and then he has banana and then he has cacao so as you go th go through a different layers he has um, um, these plants capturing the sunlight um, completely so that when you walk through his farm not much sunlight comes and falls into the ground so the efficiency of um, sunlight for the carbon cycle is utilized quite well in this farm as well so the other main component in uh, increasing the efficiency of uh, the carbon cycle is the soil biology when I say soil biology, I'm talking about both macrofauna and also the microbiology in the soil. Um, we know that uh, whatever organic material that has fallen into the ground in the form of um, whether it's a leaf, bark or a fruit uh, or a biodegradable waste, it has to be digested into the soil through various processes of um, feeding by different animals and microorganisms. Um, so, at uh, this farm of Mahalinga Naik, he has a cow dairy where um, the fodder comes for the cow comes from his own farm, and uh, the the cow dung is used for uh, the production of manure, and then that manure is um, um, put across the farm to the plants, and these manures um, are then acted acted upon by the microorganisms which is of course present in the cow dung and also he uses biofertilizers such as nitrogen fixers, uh, phosphorus solubilizers and potassium mobilizers to, his, um, to improve his soil uh, fertility and these microbes later uh, digest this uh, organic matter and make the nutrients bioavailable for the roots of the plants so that uh, these nutrients get absorbed by the plant and goes into photosynthesis um, again increasing the speed of the, uh, the carbon cycle. Also we get to see um, Amai Mahalinga Naik doing apiculture in his farm. Um, apiculture is uh, honeybee keeping. Honeybees are in the farm are excellent for pollination. So if you have honeybees in your farm and they're going to aid the pollination between um, pollination of flowers and that again results in a high yield. So, um, it's important to have all these different um, aspects combined in a natural farming um, to have that high performance and we do see that here at Amai Mahalinga uh, place and um, it's fantastic to see the government of India has given him or has recognized Amai Mahalinga Naik with the Padma Shri award and he um, lives for it. So in the, in the following footage we will go through um, how he has done his water harvesting or multi-layer farming or uh, you know the animal husbandry with the cow dairy and then apiculture and how he's managing his soil micro. So we will see his journey as uh, we go along with this video. Now about 40 years ago, Amai Mahalinga Naika was given uh, this part of this hill which was quite, quite barren. There were no plants growing here, there was no water um, it was just a barren land. So the man set off for a challenge to um, cultivate a good natural farm over here. So the very first thing that he needs to do is to get water. As we spoke about, um, uh, the carbon cycle needs sunlight, water, carbon dioxide, oxygen, and uh, the soil biology and the nutrients from the soil. Now, consider this space as Amai Mahalinga Naik's hill. Okay, it was a barren land, there was nothing else over here. Now for water, he started digging tunnels, just like the one right behind me, and that has yielded water for him. Now how does this work? Consider this is a slope. This is a slope that he has his uh, land on, and let's consider this as his farm land on this hill. Okay. So what he did 
he started digging tunnel um, through the farm like that okay so now what happens when you dig a tunnel like that whatever rainfall has fallen on top of the hill part of it or most of it uh, flows out from the top but some of it gets absorbed inside so percolates inside so when you start digging a tunnel through this uh, hill uh, the percolated water starts dropping into the tunnel and then that water is harvested by digging a tunnel and uh, and as his plantation lies beneath this tunnel at a lower side he has created the tank water tank right next to the topmost part of his um, uh, farm where the, his uh, tunnel is located now this particular pond which harvests all the water from the uh, that's coming out of the tunnel and then is supplied to the rest of his farm through channels and also through irrigation systems such as sprinklers um, throughout the year without the use of electricity so the natural uh, force of gravity entire water management um, he has done and it's a, it's an, an, a fantastic um, example for natural farming with the low carbon footprint and yet high efficiency uh, water management system so uh, this is the tunnel that uh, Amai Mahalinganaika has dug uh, about 40 years ago and this one goes about 33 meters deep and um, this has yielded water for him so as I put my hand inside I can feel the moisture um, high humidity because the water is dropping down from the top uh, whatever percolated on the, the water percolated on this hill is getting collected it's dropping down from the top and is collected and as you can see the water is flowing and throughout the year this water flows so the man dug this tunnel all by himself um, single-handedly one person with a couple of tools and um, a lamp so he used uh, coconut um, oil um, a lamp because um, apparently coconut oil when it burns it doesn't um, produce what he calls soot uh, basically the carbon dioxide produced by the burning of coconut oil is a lot less compared to any other oil uh, say kerosene so it's more, um, it will keep more oxygen for him to breathe when he goes deep inside to 30 meters. I've gone inside this tunnel. Um, after a while, while uh, the tunnel starts getting narrow, and then there is a point in which you have to crawl and go. So imagine a man uh, who used to dig the tunnel in the night time, not even in daytime, in the night time, all alone, had to dig the um, tunnel and carry the mud out by himself dig more, carry the mud out again, like he had repeated the whole process over and over and over again, thousands of times to dig this tunnel um, for 33 meters and uh, get that water, what he's getting today. And it's been over 30 years since um, his, um, this tunnel has been working and it still works every year. And I think the water situation is only getting better because we see uphill of this uh, in this hill the vegetation is also increasing um, there are more trees these days which helps um, the water uh, to percolate and also there are a um, lot of water harvesting structures which are made on the hill which allows the water to percolate more into the ground another interesting um, story about Amai Mahaling and Nike is this is not the only tunnel he's built this is the sixth tunnel that he has done in the first few tunnels he um, didn't get water so but un instead of um, dis being disheartened and not trying he kept on trying again and again and again and on the on the sixth tunnel he found plenty of water so i think the two out of these six tunnels have yielded water and this is the one major one and this is good because um, this particular tunnel is on the topmost side of his property and thus he can use the gravity to um, irrigate his entire far farmland and not depend on electricity or any additional power. 
so much lower carbon footprint from this farm here. Um, so the water is collected from the, 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 the tunnel, a water cave. Uh, it goes through over here and it gets collected on a tank. And then another bigger tank, which is again on the topmost part of the farm. Come, let's have a look. So the water comes through here and it kind of acts like as a filter and then the overflowed water goes into this bigger tank with about uh, 25,000 litre capacity and as the water moves continuously through till the end of the summer and as this place is in an elevated place in the topmost part of the farm um, the water is distributed through channels and a sprinkler system throughout the farm without using electricity. So we are right now walking through the water channels. So whatever water is collected from the, um, the tunnel and in the tank is made flow through these channels and for every two rows of trees there is a water channel. That's how the water gets distributed throughout the farm without using any electricity. So the other essential component of the carbon cycle is the sunlight itself. It's the photons falling from, uh, coming from the sun, uh, falling on the leaf, which is used for photosynthesis. Now in the Amai Mahalinga Naikas farm, we get to see a multi-layered um, crop system where the sunlight is used in all the different layers. On the top layer, we have um, uh, arachnid, as you can see it which goes up to 30-35 feet up in the sky catching all that uh, sunlight and right next to it we see coconut which is pretty much taking the same um, level sunlight from the same level, coconuts and then as we come down a little bit creeping up on the arachna trees we see black pepper and they're capturing the sunlight again from uh, the top to the bottom and then we have uh, nutmeg which is which goes up to 20 feet high and it, it has a lot of small leaves but plentiful leaves which capture the sunlight and uh, produces crops over there and then as we come down a little bit we have banana banana grows up to 15 feet and then it has this massive array of leaves which capture the sunlight and uh, does that photosynthesis and then as we come down a little bit we have our favorite crop cacao uh, or cocoa uh, it also has many leaves it's much lower it grows up to 10 feet high and uh, yeah it produces cacao there and, and then we also have in between fruit trees I see a star apple over here uh, which is you know the star apples are already there you can see star apples coming up. It also grows for about 20-25 feet and produces uh, the fruit that we can enjoy. And also the birds uh, who love the fruits and uh, it's essential to have a lot of birds. We can, you know, they not only help in the photosynthesis, sorry, uh, pollination, but also they help in keeping the insects at bay and biocontrol. And then we also see uh, a citrus variety uh, tree which has grown, grown up to about uh, 25 to 30 feet and uh, it's much lower than the arachna uh, but uh, yeah it's a multi-layer integrated crop and I totally forgot about the jackfruit which is right over here now jackfruits also um, it grows quite tall over a period of time it not only um, gives you jackfruit which is a great food crop um, but also once it dies it's, it's a great timber and uh, you know when all these multi plants come together your um, soil biology is improved the biomass organic content uh, is also improved and the overall carbon cycle in this natural farm is at high performance is at, at peak is what I can say um, and it's just fantastic work by 
Padmashri Amai, Mahaling Anai, and it's lovely to be here. So as uh, Amai Mahaling Anaika developed his farm, he um, took for the step farming and he dug these different terraces or steps in his farm. So basically it was just a hill before and he all dug it himself. So I'm standing on the edge of the topmost step and it drops down about uh, 20 feet and another um, layer is down there and then again it drops down another by 10-15 feet and then another uh, terrace is over there and it keeps going down to about eight steps and uh, um, so this way he enhances the, the availability of sunlight for his plants um, and he makes the water go through because of gravity again without the use of power. Some of the advantages of step farming is um, obviously it increases um, you know, the, the surface area of um, the sunlight which is touching so it's more efficient that way. Um, the water is distributed, uh, irrigation is done without the use of power, it reduces um, soil erosion and uh, sedimentation and, and it's, it's a, a pretty brilliant way of uh, natural farming and step farming uh, is done by Amay Maling and Aika is what we get to see over here. One of the amazing uh, thing about Amay Mahaling and Aika's farm is uh, the one that I love is his apiculture. He has over uh, 10 honeybee boxes in here and you can just hear them buzzing around you um, when you walk around the farm. Now, they're very important for the farm and plants because they aid in pollination. We can see um, them literally carrying these pollens and uh, flying around and they go from one plant, uh, plant to the other. And when they do that and when they're sucking um, nectar out of these uh, uh, flowers, they're also pollinating them. So this is also contributing for um, a good yield in his farm. Our lovely farmer, Mr. Nike, Mr. and Mrs. Nike also maintain a very beautiful um, garden and uh, this pond is my favorite. They have the lotus growing in this uh, pond. <clears throat> so this is the uh, soil quality at uh, uh, Amai Mahaling and Nike's farm and um, this is like this and it can, it can it can tell you straight away that soil biology is fantastic here we can find earthworms um, millipedes pill millipedes centipedes all this macro fauna over here which are basically digesting this organic matter as soon as possible into this and then in here we can't see them but we have uh, bio fertilizers in here so there are the nitrogen fixers such as Azospirillum, Azotobacter, your uh, phosphorus solubilizer such as Aspergillus niger, um, Bacillus megatherium, and then we have uh, potassium mobilizers such as Fracheria, um, all inoculated in the soil. Um, in 2004, as a part of uh, central government, central and state government initiative, um, Varanasi Development and Research Foundation did the Mudumbailu um, Organic Village Project and also Goldthamage Organic Village Project which uh, Mahaling and Aika was a part of and that's how we got introduced to biofertilizers and uh, it's been over 15 years since he started inoculating biofertilizers into his soil and uh, it's turned out really magical here. Um, there are also other ways of getting biofertilizers into your um, farm through uh, the ways of Jeevamrath, um, getting different digesters in here, uh, but uh, yeah, biofertilizers definitely improve the soil quality and enhance the carbon cycle and it's a very part of that carbon cycle um, and part of that natural organic farming, natural farming with the use of technology. I think that's what we need to uh, see as we go ahead because we do have to feed a lot of people and uh, we need to get some profits from the farm as well. So use that sustainable methods um, and you know the, get the best from the natural farming and also the, the science as we know it. 
some of my Mahalinga Naikar scow over here and uh, you can see what he has done at the background is he has put a lot of biomass, uh, the, the green leaves that he collected from his farm and the forest around right on the, on the cow shed. So this place itself <clears throat> as, uh, as the cows eating on the, um, on the leaves and uh, the barks and all the, the organic the waste that's generated out of the farm the cow is eating and um, it's all digesting in the stomach mixing with microorganisms and as the cow, cow dung comes out of the cow it's also getting mixed with the leaves and um, a great uh, organic manure is being produced right there right cow? beauty A cow is such a sacred animal in, uh, in our culture, um, I mean it's not just for milk um, that we have the cow at, at the farms but also they are the essential part of the carbon cycle which the universe has created so um, no wonder we worship them as holy and it, uh, it makes um, real sense in that way. Um, another favorite thing about uh, the Naik couple, um, Maling Naik and his missus, is that very, they live a very simplistic life, very minimalistic life. They try to grow as much as vegetables in their farm itself. They consume the food that comes out of their farm. Uh, they depend on outside um, items as less as possible. And they also upcycle a lot of the, <clears throat> um, the waste material. Uh, which, which can be recycled and upcycled, they do that all the time. So it's a minimalistic lifestyle of a farmer is also essential um, in the natural farming that we see. And it's just, uh, it's very inspiring. And um, I feel honored to be here and associated with him for the last two decades since my childhood. And I've uh, been growing up um, seeing these kind of farms around here. And uh, we wish that more and more farmers adopt this natural uh, organic farming techniques in India and uh, we head towards sustainability as our younger generations take over. We give them our land in a better place than what we took it. Um, so I think that should be the essence of uh, um, the farming culture in our country.